Hi, I'm Anna Harris, and this is the Defined by God podcast video, a support resource for Christians looking for hope and healing from trauma and adversity. Join us as we discuss the latest and best strategies for healing and thriving. Hi, welcome back. I am Anna Harris, and this is the Defined by God Ministries podcast. And I am talking today with John Arshambaugh, and this is part two. Uh, we talked last time um, about uh, his story of having PTSD and how he discovered it and how he's been recovering from it. And today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different, but related. And that is how attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD uh, and ADD, how they're related, how they're different, how they're similar to PTSD. And so let me bring John on. Hi, John. Hi. Hello. Hi. You're back. I am for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much. And um, yes, yeah, so I, I'm very interested in this topic. And we were just talking a second ago about my interest in, um, you know, the topic, uh, the diagnosis of ADHD and ADD. It's somewhat common these days, and um, the more that I learn about it, the more interesting it is. Um, and I do have four adult kids, one of which um, had, was diagnosed with uh, ADD as a child. And so it's been interesting um, even watching uh, them navigate it as an adult and, you know, being very successful in a career and yet, like, differences. And I like how you say wired differently. You know, it's, it's not a deficit. It really shouldn't be called a deficit. It's, it's a difference. So, yeah. So if you could just talk about what, what your experience yeah. and what you think people should know. So uh, let, let's start, like I said, in the previous episode, uh, I, I was diagnosed during my recovery of PTSD at 35 years old. It was fully known for my parents uh, prior to it, just never <laughs> decided to share that with me, which would have been great. So what I taught for the longest time, my wife called the Bing Bing effect, right? Because I will start talking about something and then I go to something else and then I go to something else. For me, it makes sense. For someone who has uh, ADHD, ADD, it makes sense as well. Mm -hmm. Now for the rest of the population, that's so much because I don't make, the links are not clear. And mm -hmm. uh, and we just laughed at it for, for the longest time. I've been with her for 12 years and, and she was like, you know, it's just, you just talk and you, you get to places where... It doesn't make sense. Uh, we started to be more interested into it together because we are very, very sure our oldest has it too. Yeah. Um, uh, differently than the way I have it, but um, because each person are different, obviously, but it comes with also anger, right? As a kid, there, there's that anger where you don't know what's going on in your, in your brain, in your heart. So the easiest protection that we have is anger. Right. The Is it from frustration, you think? Uh, from think? sadness. I, I think I think it's it hides like so. I'll give you an example. We have a little one of one year old. He's five. Uh, the oldest is five. Well, Lachlan, the oldest, will will by mistake hurt the little one, right? Mm -hmm. Or the little one might be fearful of something and just start crying. And mm -hmm. then we say, Well, what happened? And then he's angry. And he's so angry. And I mean, his door, he kicked it. And there's a hole at the bottom, a little hole of a five years old foot. Um, and uh, and at first we were angry for those kind of reaction because like, why do you act like this to apologize, right? Like just kind of the, the normal pathways. Um, to one day kind of, I started to buy books for my own to realize what's going on with me. I got told I has ADHD. Um, and when you have ADHD, that's a funny part. If you have one parent who has ADHD, 33% of the chance your kid's going to have it. Mm. If you have two parents, 66% of the chance your kid's going to have it. Um, and like PTSD, like we talked in the past, um, there's a stigma that roams around that, uh, right. what we call now neurodivergent, right? Um, and within neurodivergent, you have autism, you have, you have a lot, whole spectrum of things going on there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was a kid, yeah, like like you just said earlier, like the hyperactivity, that that's all I knew about it. So in my mind, I'm like, I, I'm standing and I've been standing and I move when I speak. This is a French thing, apparently, or Italian thing. Um, but but I don't stop, and I have a lot of energy to go. I don't think it's the hyperactivity because I can sit 
and work nonstop, which we call the hyper focus. Uh -huh. And that's one example where I started to study um, what is I what, what is ADHD, right? And, uh, and how can I make it my ally versus like uh, something that will be that I have to carry on my back for the rest of my life. Right? Yeah. And so I think, if I can just, you had told me that as a child, you weren't really diagnosed with it. You didn't know, no. but your parents did. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you didn't come become aware of it till later in life, till your thirties. Is that right? 25 years old. Yeah. So a year ago, <laughs> okay. a, a year ago. And, and to be honest, uh, I started medication. We are in March or so three months ago. Okay. And, and I had my first panic attack the first day I took my medication. And it's going to be very funny. And, and I, it's, it's, there's something ironic about it. But uh, I, I dropped my son off at the bus station on the morning and the, the school bus. And I just took the meds. And they do effect within 15 minutes. Um, now you have to understand my brain is busy. Right. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. calling it that way because I think about millions of things. And I guess this is why I write a book. I run a business. I'm a coach. I'm a potter. I'm a, there's constantly something going on. Right. And I was driving back home, which is probably a five minutes drive. And I look at a plate of the car on a car just in front of me. And I was like, wow, I'm looking at a plate in the car. And there was no noise. There was nothing going on. And then I started to just. Oh, in your mind. Okay. What's going on? What's going on? And the panic <laughs> came in because I couldn't hear anything else. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Right. Let, let's sit down. Let's have a coffee. Mm -hmm. Let's just understand what's going on. And uh, and I was like, okay, this is what the medication does. It quiet down or, or silence a bit what's going on in my head. Um, mm -hmm. Because I was fearful to lose uh, the creativity, which is a big, mm -hmm. big sign of, um, of ADHD. Um, but I also kind of start since I started to know what was going on, I'm like, okay, well, the hyper focus that I can sit and write or work for 12 hours without eating, going to the bathroom or anything, that's mm -hmm. a positive. But as much as people are saying like, well, this is insane. This is not how it should be. Well, for normal people, <laughs> for me, it works. I can, yeah. I can, I can clear that off. Um, and that's kind of like my, my editor for my book, as an example, I would write. And I would come back with like 50 page. And she's like, well, well, that's that's the fifth of the book. You did that in two days. I'm like, I know. I don't know why. It just came. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's the hypersensitivity as well. We are very, very in tune with our feelings and the feelings of others. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll give you a good example here with this. Um, because, like I said in the previous uh, episode, part one, uh, <laughs> I said um, I did not have any feelings for the longest time. So mm -hmm. what became my meter of feeling as my wife she's uh -huh. happy i'm happy she's angry i'm angry um and, and and i kind of even if i have my feelings now back right i, I allowed them back i i still kind of tend to go there but i feel her 100 percent what's going on she's sad i know she's sad right um so there's those things um we talked because we had a meeting with a week ago with other coach which was awesome um and and what we talked as well is ADHD was kind of looked into and researched just on first uh, with mostly men. Right. And what they realized in the 2000s is uh, men and women are different. Duh. Uh, <laughs> we don't act the same way, but ADHD does not, does not act the same way either. And, and, and I find that fantastic to see this because the, the, the difference is, is, is huge. Most of the men are hyperactive, right? They mm -hmm. will go right, left and center and don't stop. The women uh, actually are now diagnosed more between 30 to 43 years old, which is a very interesting aspect why men mm -hmm. are, are are diagnosed so young. And it's because the hyperactivity is very clear to see. Right. Yeah. Versus the woman, it, the, the major sign is the dreaming, daydreaming aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we do to our daughters, right? Is we told them that all oh, the Disney story, well, there will be a Prince Charming that's going to come on his white horse or a knight or this. And, and that's daydreaming. So mm -hmm. we don't realize that, the, that that it's there because it's it's inputted in that in the kind of how we raise them. Um, and, and then this, there's four, it's discounted. Right. And they, they might not be so good in school, but they may be super good at, you know, artistically talking or creative, uh, creatively talking um, now. And, and now that, that's that's all we can look at it. Right. Like I said, if you have uh, a diagnosis on your own of ADHD, it can pass through. Yeah. There's the so just to uh, clarify. So 
in school at mm -hmm. younger ages, yeah. um, ADHD might look like getting up from your desk all the time, running around, you know, talking, all of that. Yeah. But um, in say girls, and this is not a hard and fast rule. It's just like yeah. generally speaking, yeah. um, it might look like um, just kind of not paying attention. Like you're dreaming, you're there, dreaming. but you're not really connected with what's going on. So yeah. it's quieter. And so it's therefore harder to, to see and to really recognize it until yeah. sometimes later in life. Um, mm -hmm. So where, where there's, I mean, life becomes more busy and, and, and packed up and then it's harder to process. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, there's so many little things, right. And this is kind of why I started to read about it because I, I didn't believe that it's all bad. Like PTSD. I don't think it's all bad. I think there's positive that comes to it. Um, mm -hmm. But I wanted to see as well different kind of opinions. So we have like the Canadian, uh, I think he's a psychologist, psychiatrist, Gabor Mate. Yeah, psychiatrist. Who, yeah. yeah, psychiatrist, perfect. Mm -hmm. um, which brilliant, brilliant mind um, who released the scattered mind and then some other ADHD. In his brain, what do you think it is? It's a coping mechanism, mechanism when we're kids, uh, coping mechanism of trauma, right? Mm -hmm. So, or, or neglect, right? So I was missing this. Therefore, I cope with something else. Um, so there's kind of two thoughts uh, that, that I found so far. I believe that ADHD is the, 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 the it's past generation to generation because I'm looking at my mother, who is a workaholic, <laughs> a pure workaholic. And I'm not saying that workaholic are ADHD. I'm saying that this is her dopamine seeking, mm. um, which is another thing that it kind of also uh, taught me, okay, well, when I went into the military and I was seeking for those high, you know, emotion, uh, yeah. adrenaline dump and so on and so forth. Uh, same with the police aspect. Yeah. Um, so the risk taking and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, I'm looking at other people that I talk with at age. Sexual encon encounter is another one, right? Because sex as well brings, or intimacy, if you wish, um, dopamine right? That, that, that will right. come with mm -hmm. it. Um, I, I know a lot of people who have ADHD who's going to work non work out nonstop for two hours and they just want that to happen, mm -hmm. right? The, the yeah. Good. I, I can sleep now. Um, I mean, I, I still do it. Like, uh, like I said to you, I'm going to do a 222 miles, a uh, rucksack march, um, for raising, raising awareness on mental health it's 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 not brilliant <laughs> it's gonna hurt but yeah. i'm seeking for that kind of pain uh because i find that it's a good pain um so i, I kind of started to look into it and then i kind of started to look at numbers as well mm -hmm. because adhd when special force uh it's between 68 percent to 75 percent of the member have it wow because they run that like you need to assess everything you need to mm -hmm. prepare to go there. You need to also think about the family who's way back home, the safety there, as your gun ready, as my suit, they, all of mm -hmm. those, right? There's your mind has to be everywhere. Now, the fun part with this is because life in general nowadays is so busy for everyone, the human body developed VAST, V A S T E, um, which is people developing traits of ADHD, but mm -hmm. they don't have ADHD. Hmm. Because you need to be um, multitasking constantly, your brain would develop that side of the thing, right? So uh, give you an example, like police officer, firefighter, um, dispatcher, right? Who's talking to the person at the same time who's going through a crisis, writing, talking to whatever police officer, EMS, paramedics, and saying, this is what's going on right now. There's this, this, this at home. And meanwhile, as she, she or he does that, look on another screen and look at their background. Are they dangerous people? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. Multitasking is, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in an ADHD brain, it does it easily. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is amazing that the human does it. Now, the funny part that they brought up recently is ADHD always has been right. Because if you look back, Wait, ADHD, what always, always been, it's not something oh, yeah. new. Uh -huh. uh, because if we go back in, you know, centuries away, uh, we had to go hunt for our food. Right. So you needed that hypervigilance, that mm -hmm. hyper uh, awareness around you of, okay, am I going to make too much noise? Am I, what is going mm -hmm. on? Am I a prey or am I a hunter? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it's been there. I think we we put a really dark color to it because it's different than the the mass of people. But I, I think it's 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 very present. Like like I said, I mean, the the, the, the interesting part. I mean, with and, and we talked about that you and I. But um, it, it, we can be very passionate and zealous person. Mm -hmm. But if it's a black and white type of job, we're gonna be AD, ADHD person can become very rigid in it. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example from my case. At first, when I joined the police, I was like, "This is, this is the rules, right?" Because I had been in the military, and the military is a very framed world. Um, when I realized, like, wait a minute, uh, it's, it's not how black and white, right? There's there's relationship that has to be built, and then that's the the feeling side of ADHD, which is hypersensitivity that kicks in, right? I, I remember mm -hmm. clearly. I'll give you a good example: is uh, I entered a house where. 11 years old called the police because mom took his xbox away and his tablet away uh because he skipped school mm -hmm. and uh and and we have to attend to this because we never know and the mom explained he skipped school so i took his, his games away there's nine kids in the house oh wow i needed to run mom to see what his background is and she had a warrant outstanding for uh driving without insurance mm -hmm. right now i should have taken her to jail Right. Um, but her husband was already there. Yeah. And if I would have taken her, now we have nine kids who's going to hate police. They mm -hmm. won't hate mom. Right. And, and it will be, will create way more trauma within this household doing this, uh, putting them in families for I don't know how long. Um, so what I gave her, I gave her a two weeks window, got to pay your fine, or I'm going to come back and take you to jail, right? It's not all black and white. And that's kind of when I started to learn that aspect of, of not so rigid and mm -hmm. making feelings at the right times. Um, the, the creativity is, is, is a wonderful thing. I mean, as a kid, I would draw, I would paint, I would write, I would do all of this. I would fail my heart class because I would not do what they ask. And, and that's a, that's an ADHD thing to go against whatever we say constantly. So because I think we have a box for school, right? And, and the student has to learn this, 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 this. Um, sadly, sometimes we we should not. We should have it a bit more open, right? It's it's, it's arts, it's hearts. Let's 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 score it on it, or mm -hmm. whatever we whatever they do now. Like right? I don't know, price of being there, you get a medal for it. Uh, but all of that to say, like they, there's, I think we need to see the world sometimes with a glass half full versus half empty. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. one one of the things that i brought up last time we talked was the rd rsd rejection sensitive dysphoria mm -hmm. i barely had friends as a kid mm -hmm. because i had that kind of odd humor which comes with apparently adhd um but i by fear to be rejected i would reject myself prior to it so that way it hurts less mm -hmm. so the brain thinks right but the truth is it's is it be it be even worse because you reject yourself and you don't even know if they would even reject you before they do before right. make a decision so that was one of the first thing that i learned about adhd uh i had no idea that existed that the brain was doing this mm -hmm. um, and then opening myself to it right like yeah. i've that's heard interesting that that's all part of it the rs yeah. is part of the like, yeah. and, and, and people can take actually uh can take a, there's test online if you write mm -hmm. uh rsd so rejection uh sensitive dysphoria uh -huh. test people can actually make the test and verify if they score high on it it's extremely interesting wow. um woman with the hypersensitivity mm -hmm. uh I, I was reading about a journalist actually um in the states who wrote about it and, and she had never understood why she was so sensitive and and some doctor will be well it's because you're menstruating right now or you're pre-menstruating or whatever that is um mm -hmm. because it, i don't think that a, a general doctor can necessarily tell you about adhd you can have an mm -hmm. idea right uh, but not necessarily that it's adhd yeah. um now if we want to link it to ptsd yes memory lost is a big one Right. Mm -hmm. And then the boat side, I will ask my kid of five years old, what did you do today at school? I don't know. So out. um are these are similarities yes. between the two yes. diagnoses. Yes. Yeah. Because sometimes there's mixed, right? Mm -hmm. they, they they get a diagnosis of one and when it's another thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. Um so it being fidgety, 
is a, is a big one as well. Uh, I mean, I, I was told that the 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 the, the humor is one uh, for ADHD, but it, it is for the the AD the PTSD as well because we have dark humor, mm-hmm. right? To cope, um, the things that we laugh at sometimes there's not it's not funny, right? Yeah. Um, and but I also think like in PTSD, well, really even coping with trauma, there's also uh, often dissociation mm-hmm. and, and with ADD, um, there can be the kind of zoning out and just yeah. kind of like not being there. And that's kind of overlapping or, you know, similarities between the two. Yes. Um, and, and I think it's important to see the difference between dissociation and avoidance, right? Yeah. Avoidance is something we decide to do. Yeah. And dissociation is your brain saying, I'm taking a break. Uh, That's kind of how I see those because uh, because I don't think that avoidance is a bad thing. And I'm going to explain my my train of thought because it's important. It's it's a specific one. Um, If I'm very activated, and and let's say today I was, I received a phone call from insurance, whatever, maybe, and I became very, very alert and and I could feel my pulse and um, so on and so forth. Okay. Well, am I visiting what's going on right now in my body and, and really um, studying what's going on there so I can make peace with it? Well, I can't mm. because I'm up here. So I'm going to wait until I'm there yeah. and then visit. You're dysregulated so, exactly. and then you're becoming more regulated. Okay, that, That's exactly it. So what I would do then is I would find something that will calm me down so if it's cooking because i love cooking if it's reading because i love reading if it's playing cooking. My- it kind of sounded like you said cocaine but you said no. cooking <laughs> yes yes <laughs> cooking <laughs> cooking is not legal legal here yet yeah, uh, here i mean <laughs> but uh but but and cooking. i think co- cooking down. coo uh-huh. Right, so uh, cooking is is one that works because I, I used to be cook before uh, a cook before military. Um, but the interesting part that we have to mention here as well is medication. Normal medication might not have effect uh, mm-hmm. for PTSD. Might not work because you have ADHD. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that's a very very interesting one. I, I know, uh, like, like I said in the previous episode, I said that I had probably I think twelve or eighteen medication trial, um, and the last one was one from 1961 that has ADD, whatever, ingredient in it, like for ADD medication. Mm -hmm. And that's the only one that I was able to deal with as an antidepressant. Uh, But I could say the same thing for a sleeping medication, right? So um, there's none that works uh, until they said, well, okay, we're going to try CBD, uh, cannabis oil, cannabis, whatever, the the THC part, the the Uh good part. Um, And that makes me sleep. Right. So I went from two hours to rebuild it to three, four, five, six, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so it, it's an effect on many ways life. Now, ADHD people are not, well, it's very interesting, especially for statistics in the US. Uh, if we go back 30 years ago, it was 3% of the population who had it. Mm-hmm. Now we're at like 13%. Hmm. Well, right. So mm-hmm. is it that we're labeling people more or? do we realize that more people have it? I, I really wonder, right? Because right. Th- there's a big question there. Um, because I wonder of- about, I don't know if you've thought about this, but video games mm-hmm. uh, also, are they affecting, you know, uh, developing brains? That's a different subject, Ooh. but. Um, I would have to look. I, I'd be honest. I, I use that as an avoidance factor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and uh, but I cannot do it for a long time. Uh-huh. Because concentration doesn't stick, right? I don't have the hyper focus when I play video game. Um, I play video game at night where everything cool down, the kids are in bed, probably 20 minutes, and then I'm done. Uh, I, I will seek for something that I need to learn. Um, so addiction is a big factor as well in ADHD, like I talked about earlier. And mm-hmm. I think it's a seek of dopamine. Um, this is why a lot of people are told, be careful if you're for a call, be careful with gambling. Be careful with this, this, this. And I was raised in this. Like my uncle has gambling issues. My other uncle has drug issues. My mother's a workaholic. And, and so on. So alcoholic is in the other uncle. And one uncle has a sex addict, right? So, and I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I have to be careful about every uh, one of those things. Uh, yeah. And I, I, things. Uh-huh. Right? Because they say it's it's a sickness, right? It's something that we can have. And, and truthfully, mm-hmm. I'm not addicted to anything. Um, well, maybe my wife, but that's different. But, uh, 
but uh, the awareness, I think, is key, mm -hmm. right? Uh, besides just being told, well, this is what ADHD is, and that's that's all, we have now podcasts. We have Audible, where we can listen to books, where we can have different opinions. Um, mm -hmm. And we're in a world where we have social media, mm -hmm. where we have access to so much. It's insane. So I would say to anyone who's wondering, and just it could be the vast aspect, right? Read, look, listen, um, educate yourself because maybe you fit for one factor and, and that would change your life. Mm -hmm. but, but the biggest part that I've seen, and I hope nobody will go that way, is, is don't beat yourself for it. It's right. there, right? It's like the PTSD. My life is over. No, it's not over. You've been dealing with ADHD for the last 35 years. Mm -hmm. Well, you survive and you've been doing good. And if yeah. you have not, well, let's fix it. Right. And, yeah. and, and I mean, this is, this is the other aspect. Um, yeah. I think it does help people to understand, um, you know, if they've had a certain trait for a really long time and then understand why and where is that coming from? And, yeah. you know, that they're not the only person that's like yeah. that too. Sometimes we do think we're the only one like that. Totally agree. And, and, and I mean, for each negative, there's a positive, mm -hmm. right? It's, 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 there's two sides to yeah. a coin. Um, so it's easy to stop ourselves to the negative, but why not focus on that positive? And it's not because I'm, I'm oblivious about the negative. No, mm -hmm. I don't feed off negative, right? Um, and I rather think that uh, I, I can I can make better with it than without it because I don't know what is without it, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, so th there's so many things. I mean, we talked about this, and for anyone who listen, ADHD 2.0, mm -hmm. um, it's a small. I think it's ten dollars on Amazon. It's pretty. It's pretty cheap. Um, it's written by two doctors who have ADHD, and mm -hmm. and they actually call it a superpower, which I find very interesting. Um, yeah. Because it's yeah, so you do see a lot of high achievers that have AD, yeah. ADHD. Well, or or they're just on the neurodivergent, right? Like you, you yeah. look at Elon Musk as uh, what is he? Is he uh? He's is it Asperger's or Asperger, and I think uh -huh. he's on the autism spectrum. Um, uh -huh. and, and um, so I mean, that's a good example, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not everyone who likes him, and that's fine, but we can recognize he's brilliant. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? The, the brain doesn't function the same way. Yeah. Um, there's people who can learn about everything, like you have people who get up and speak 15 languages. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Like, we're, we're, the, 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 so many words, but they have that facility. I don't, I don't think it's a random person, right? Yeah. And, and if you look as well, and this is why I say we need to educate ourselves. If we go back in the nineties, autism was uh, something that people don't feel, right? They, they mm -hmm. were, it was said, oh, we don't feel. When now we look at research and, and so on and so forth, actually, autistic people feel even more than most of society. Mm, right and yeah. that's why they don't want to be touched right that's why they don't get into they feel it right so uh, and, and it, it's extremely interesting i had a friend who came over here his son is on the, is on a spectrum and my dogs would not approach him hmm. right and i'd be curious because they're super gentle dogs i mean one is is kind of my service dog what do they feel mm -hmm. and, and, he, and he was not screaming it was super quiet it was just in his corner but the dogs would not approach would bark and i'm like never done that it's kind of bizarre mm. so we're different I, I think it comes down to we all create that society right there's no reason why we should put each other in a groups or, or whatever that is we should accept how we are and, and yeah. i think that will stop the divide down the road right because there's divide across the world right now which makes it horrible <laughs> because yeah. i think we need every kind of people to make this world a world yeah. Um, and it comes to this, right? Like, um, I, uh, I, I love how your, your beginning starts, right? About, about Christians and so on. And, and I mean, I've been to church probably for 20 years of my life. I still go yeah. once a year. Because you went to I, Catholic school, right? Yeah. Yeah. And hundred mm -hmm. percent. Right. And there's, mm -hmm. there is, um, in, in the French part of Canada, you don't have like Christian or this or this it's Catholic. That's, that's mm -hmm. really what they, they, but I mean, I live in that English part now and I think we have six different church here that is different, uh, uh, part of it, which, which is extremely interesting. So I started to read about that now so, mm -hmm. because I'm curious, but, but it, 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 we need every kind and, and, and it's, it's, it's okay. It's perfect as is. Yes. Um, we can yeah, we need to embrace our differences and yeah. really not just accept them, but see them as the positive aspects as yeah. well. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've seen friends who switch religion because it, it, it's it's better for them. They, they think they embrace more of this. Uh, seeing friends that don't believe it. It doesn't matter. I think down the road, it, it, if we have respect in between us, between each other, that's all mm -hmm. that matters, right? Like, I don't have to accept necessarily you point of view, but I got to respect it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think for the one who don't know how to deal with ADHD, this is the thing too. Mm -hmm. uh, I know for my wife it was extremely hard, right? And she still mm -hmm. sometimes has, has issues to go through what's going on with him. And I'm like, wait, 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 we cannot think from our brain. We have to think from his perspective. Right. And that's extremely important because if his brain is extremely busy and we're like, what are you doing? Right. Well, there's, there's even more noise. Uh, and that's an easy, simple example. He came back one day from school and he's like, dad, the bus is too loud. Mm. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like we're in a car. You want me to play? And he loves the music from the nineties, Ninja Turtles from, um, uh, Vanilla Ice. He loves that song. So <laughs> he wants me to crank it in the car. And I'm like, this is very loud. Mm -hmm. Yes, but it's it's one person talking. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. So and, and it's true. That's another thing, right? As an ADHD, something I realize is I can hear, if I go to the restaurant, I hear everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, where, where, okay, well, that person speaks German. That's a French. And now I understand French. So I'm like, oh, God, I can understand this one. And then they speak English there. And, oh, the waitress is coming too, right? So you're aware of everything, which is uh, can be dizzy at times. Right, and I totally get that. So we bought him ear morphs. I, I'm sure I did not say that properly. Ear protector. Let's go with that word. And, oh, and, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and okay. and, uh, and and he's he's totally okay. And I'm like, yeah. just tell people it's ear it's earphones. Yeah. Right. So you don't get bullied at school. He's a big kid, so I'm not too afraid. But um, but I was like, just just say it's earphones, and you yeah. listen to music, and everyone's gonna be okay. Yeah. So that's so interesting. Like, because I've always been, and my kids would laugh about this. Like I, in the car, mm -hmm. I don't like to have the radio on and have conversation. Like yeah. I just, that would just, it drives me nuts. Like I just can't do it. Um, and it has helped me a lot to realize that it's just overstimulation, yeah. you know, and, um, and there's nothing wrong with me about that. It's just different, but other people, it doesn't bother them. They can have the radio on and talking and everything, you know, but so. See, see at night. So my wife is gone right now because she's boarding uh, for a business. But if my wife is here, right. And this is the funny part. I will play a game at night to calm me down. Uh -huh. I'm listening to a podcast to learn about uh, how the body works and I'm talking to her uh -huh. and it all works well. It's like, they have three personality, totally crazy, but, <laughs> but it makes sense. She's like, Okay, wait, wait a minute. Just step back two seconds. You just talked about scientist stuff. I'm like, oh, what well, we were talking. She's like, oh, we were talking. But I don't, this is, this is a fun part. So I don't know who, where I take the information from. Ah, right? Okay. So mm -hmm. I know I'm listening to something and it's it's getting inside. I listen to my wife as well who's talking to me. I will answer. But this part doesn't function fast enough for this part. So, <laughs> eh, 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 and it's, it's you get used to it, right? Like, um, I, I mean, for example, as a police officer, I had a, we had a, our mic was in our ear, right? So that, that way the person doesn't hear, well, that person has five warrants for threats of killing someone. Well, you don't want the person to hear this. So they start running and you have to run and it's tiring. I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, so like we had to get used to this and talking with a partner, interacting with people. Uh -huh. uh, it was super interesting as well at first because I'm French, right? Like, so English is the fourth language I learned. Um, and I have like I have a little uh, little story just for the fun of it. So I, I'm say, uh, we're in investigating a kidnapping of a cat, outdoor cat, because the cat never came back. And the, the person is saying, my neighbor stole it, kidnapped it, put some salmon just outside of my door to get the cat out. And I cannot believe that we're here for that. I'm kind of very surprised that we are paid X amount of money to answer to this. Mm -hmm. It's clearly not the worst case. It's a bylaw problem. Not, not us. Um, and I'm looking at the lady and I'm like, she's like, it's very important for me. And, and I have my ear <laughs> there and I'm like, she's like, well, I'm, like, I'm French. So I asked to translate it in my head first and then I can, you know, explain myself. Uh -huh. And she's like, is it the machine you have in your ear right now? And I was like, my machine? She's like, yeah, you have, a, you have an earphone. Does it translate everything I say? <laughs> and, and I was like, uh, no. <laughs> no. 
no. And I was like, I'm going to investigate your kidnapping. I will be right back, ma'am. And I just walk out. <laughs> I was like, okay, wow. But but it, it, there's there's sometimes it's funny, right? Like, and, and I know it's 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 a gray zone, funny because we don't want to mm-hmm. laugh at people. But I understand as well, like you know, like like you correct my words, right? There's there's stuff that I said sometime. Uh, making the mistake between breathing and breathing. Yeah, that's a, those are different things. And then a report mm-hmm. is, is extremely important and that's say yeah. one or the other. Um, but uh, so, so, yeah, so ADHD has a, something that is, I think, phenomenal. Same as autism, mm-hmm. same as Asperger's, but as mm-hmm. same as just being us. So as a human, I think we have to accept who we are. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and then makes the best of it. Um, because we all have, and if we remove all those neurodivergent or diagnosis, we all have something special. Mm-hmm. Why don't we use it for the best of it? Yeah. Did you hold up the um, uh, Scattered Minds? Did you recommend that one? Because I know that was one we wanted to talk about. That's a really good book as well. And um, so if people are interested in learning more, that's a good book. And then the other one that you mentioned, which was the uh, ADHD 2.0. So those were- And and, and I mean, I I love books, but- um, Actually, his last one is quite worth uh, as well. Uh, yeah, I'm read. reading that one right now. Yeah. yeah. It's really? a good brick, right? But mm-hmm. but it, it's super worth it. And it's very interesting to see that he wrote it. His son wrote it, not him. Mm. Because he's in the late his 70s, I think, now. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. uh, and it, together, and, uh, his, uh, his son actually narrates it, too, in the, yeah. if you do the Audible one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they have a voice that it kind of, you can tell is a younger voice, of, obviously, but they have a similar voice. Anyways, uh-huh. so, uh, and and uh, and he, he's on Joe Rogan, if, if people like podcasts and so on and so forth, right? Mm-hmm. There's, um, it, it's. I think it's interesting to see to see different views first and foremost, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because it, it helps us make a choice of opinion as well, right? Where where do I find myself in that you know scheme of things, um, and and that's where we get. But yeah, learning is the first thing I think we should do. And if we're not able to read, because yeah, our mind is scattered. Well, Audible is a good way of doing it and, mm-hmm. and taking notes. I, I think. It comes down to this. This is the thing that I realize, especially with having a busy life between, you know, being a father of young kids and an entrepreneur and, and writing books, because I'm writing two other books right now. Um, just take a notebook and, and, and write, right? You know, yeah. what do you have to do today? Uh, and, and I mean, I have, I have millions of calendars across the house uh, or, or just to keep you on track. So some people may be ashamed of really like rolling their life the way that it is. I was ashamed like this, uh, but I'd rather being ashamed of having 50 calendar in my house than being late at a meeting because mm-hmm. then I feel bad for the time that the person lost waiting yeah. for me. Right. You just so, roll with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, it's always easier to say, you know, I'm sorry, but I'd rather not say it and being there on time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know, right? So to each their own, but uh, th- there's a lot of positive. And, and truly, I mean, well, you, you said you had a child who who, who was diagnosed. Uh, and uh, I mean, it, it's, we're not, we're not aliens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're normal well, people. And, and I'll say, you know, it, it um, I think as adults, like you, you learn to, compensate for your differences and then also use some of it as strengths too. Um, because, um, my child, he, he, um, has been very successful in what he does and he's a very hard worker, very creative and it's worked in his, in his benefit. So, um, yeah, so that's the, that's one of the things that I want people to know is that, um, you know, uh, just to to be more educated so that you know what what some of the differences are and so, what some of the strengths are and um yeah so I, this has been so good go ahead i i think the, the one thing i want to i want to mention be, because i find that it's it's the the part that it's hard for people to adapt to and people who live with adhd people is the time aspect mm. right mm-hmm. so a lot of adhd people run with the time present so it's going on right now. And then whatever is after or before, it doesn't matter. Uh-huh. A lot of ADHD people will be last minute, mm-hmm. but they will function and they will write it perfectly. Uh, and I can give you an example as if it's re- writing an essay or preparing like a, a presentation, 
I never been the person who who plan three weeks in advance. Even if we had, I would plan probably a day or two days. And I remember even morning before writing my text mm -hmm. and uh, and having like a plus. And I was like, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not that I mean, I, I, I'm super brilliant. It's not it. It's been proven that ADHD can actually do things extremely successful under stress. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and and that's the difference, right? So it, it so when they say superpower, I, I don't think it's we're heroes or whatever that is. I think we just we live differently. So for mm -hmm. uh, a person who would have had to prepare for three weeks in a row, well, it took me two hours where I had no recollection of the time, but I had that product at the end, right? right. Um, yeah. So it's a bit different. Their focus is different and so on and so forth. But those are small, just small traits uh, in between like so many, uh, which makes us us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I've got your book uh, back on the banner at the bottom, Operation Wired Differently, Understanding yeah. Humans Who Run Toward Danger and the Trauma in Their Wake. And um, it's by John, and it, say your last name for me, please. Archambault. Okay, well, yeah. Archambault at Balt is what it looks like to me, yeah. in American. But um, anyway, so people can find it that way. Let me take yeah. this off. That way people can find yeah. it. And, and, and they can reach me on, uh, I'm on Instagram under wireddifferently.co. Um, mm -hmm. And that's your I, website I, as well. And my website, yeah. So I, okay. yeah, I sell some apparel. I mean, that's the other entrepreneur side of the things. I create apparel yeah. um, jackets and so on and so forth. Um, and the money raised goes to organization will help mental health or I sponsor right now two teams of rugby in North Carolina. Uh, I okay. donate to um, equine therapy organization in Canada mm -hmm. uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm just trying to do my little piece. Um, yeah. But yeah, if, if anyone needs to have a chat, I'm always open. I answer to everyone. I'm not uh, I'm, I'm here to help. I guess that, yeah. that comes down to this. That's awesome. That's so good. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I just want to tell people that are listening and watching, um, if you want to find Defined by God Ministries, you can find us at definedbygod.com. And um, we have a lot of podcasts and blog posts and lots of resources for you. And uh, I'm a trauma um, uh, in resiliency life coach and do one-on-one -on -one life coaching and I'm putting together groups. And, uh, so yeah, so get on our email list and, um, also, you know, I have a Facebook group, so there's lots of ways that you can get connected. So thank you everybody for watching and thank you, John, so much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Bye.